Spinosaurus is a genus of Spinosaurid dinosaur that lived in what now is North Africa during the late Cretaceous period, about 99 to 93.5 million years ago. The genus was known first from Egyptian remains, discovered in 1912 and described by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer in 1915. The original remains were destroyed in World War II, but additional material came to light in the early 21st century. The best known species is Spinosaurus aegyptiacus from Egypt, although a potential second species, Spinosaurus marocanus, has been recovered from Morocco. Spinosaurus is the longest known terrestrial carnivore. Other large carnivores comparable to Spinosaurus include theropods such as Tyrannosaurus, Gigantosaurus, and Carcharodontosaurus. The most recent study suggests that previous body size estimates are overestimated and that Spinosaurus aegyptiacus reached 14 meters or 46 feet in length and 7.4 tons in body mass. The skull of Spinosaurus was long, low, and narrow, similar to that of a modern crocodilian, and bore straight conical teeth with no serrations. It would have had large, robust forelimbs, bearing three-fingered hands with an enlarged claw on the first digit. The distinctive neural spines of Spinosaurus, which were long extensions of the vertebrae or backbones, grew to at least 1.65 meters, 5.4 feet long, and were likely to have had skin connecting them, forming a sail-like structure, although some authors have suggested that the spines were covered in fat and formed a hump. The hip bones of Spinosaurus were reduced and the legs were very short in proportion to the body. Its long and narrow tail was deepened by tall, thin neural spines and elongated chevrons forming a flexible fin or paddle-like structure. Spinosaurus is known to have eaten fish and most scientists believe that it hunted both terrestrial and aquatic prey. Evidence suggests that it was semi-aquatic. How capable it was of swimming has been strongly contested. Spinosaurus's leg bones had osteosclerosis, high bone density, allowing for better buoyancy control. Multiple functions have been put forward for the dorsal sail, including thermoregulation and display, either to intimidate rivals or attract mates. It lived in a humid environment of tidal flats and mangrove forests, alongside many other dinosaurs as well as fish, crocodilomorphs, lizards, turtles, pterosaurs, and plesiosaurs. Function of Neural Spines The function of the dinosaur's sail or hump is uncertain. Scientists have proposed several hypotheses, including heat regulation and display. In addition, such a prominent feature on its back could make it appear even larger than it was, intimidating other animals. If the structure contained abundant blood vessels, the animal could have used the sail's large surface area to absorb heat. This would imply that the animal was only part warm-blooded at best and lived in climates where nighttime temperatures were cool or low and the sky usually not cloudy. It is also possible that the structure was used to radiate excess heat from the body rather than to collect it. Large animals, due to the relatively small ratios of surface area of their body compared to the overall volume, face far greater problems of dissipating excess heat at higher temperatures than gaining it at lower. Sales of large dinosaurs added considerably to the skin area of their bodies, with minimum increase of volume. Furthermore, if the sail was turned away from the sun or positioned at a 90-degree angle towards a cooling wind, the animal would quite effectively cool itself in the warm climate of Cretaceous Africa. However, Bailey in 1997 was of the opinion that a sail could have absorbed more heat than it radiated. Bailey proposed instead that Spinosaurus and other dinosaurs with long neural spines had fatty humps on their backs for energy storage, insulation, and shielding from heat. Many elaborate body structures of modern-day animals serve to attract members of the opposite sex during mating. It is possible that the sail of Spinosaurus was used for courtship in a way similar to a peacock's tail. Stromer speculated 
that the size of the neural spines may have differed between males and females. It was also suggested that the dorsal sail of Spinosaurus was analogous to the dorsal fins of sailfish and served a hydrodynamic purpose. More basal, long-legged Spinosaurids had otherwise round or crescent-shaped dorsal sails, whereas in Spinosaurus, the dorsal neural spines formed a shape that was roughly rectangular, similar in shape to the dorsal fins of sailfish. It was argued that Spinosaurus used its dorsal neural sail in the same manner as sailfish, and that it also employed its long, narrow tail to stun prey, like a modern thresher shark. Sailfish employ their dorsal fins for herding schools of fish into a bait ball, where they cooperate to trap the fish into a certain area where the sailfish can snatch the fish with their bills. Spinosaurus exhibited the anatomical features required to combine hunting strategies, a sail for herding prey more efficiently, as well as a flexible tail and neck to slap the water for stunning, injuring, or killing prey. The submerged dorsal sail would have provided a strong centerboard-like counterforce for powerful sideways movements of the strong neck and long tail, as performed by sailfish or thresher sharks. While smaller dorsal sails or fins make the dorsal water volume better accessible for slashing, it could be speculated that their smaller stabilization effect makes lateral slashing less efficient. Forming a hydrodynamic fulcrum and hydrodynamically stabilizing the trunk along the dorsoventral axis, Spinosaurus's sail would also have compensated for the inertia of the lateral neck by tail movements and vice versa, not only for predation, but also for accelerated swimming. This behavior might also have been one reason for Spinosaurus's muscular chest and neck reported by Ibrahim and colleagues. Diet and Feeding It is unclear whether Spinosaurus was primarily a terrestrial predator or a piscivore, as indicated by its elongated jaws, conical teeth, and raised nostrils. The hypothesis of Spinosaurus as specialized fish eaters has been suggested before by Alan Jack Charig and Angela Cheryl Milner for Baryonyx. They base this on the anatomical similarity with crocodilians and the presence of digestive acid-etched fish scales in the ribcage of the type specimen. Large fish are known from the faunas containing other spinosaurids, including the Morsenia in the mid-Cretaceous of northern Africa and Brazil. Direct evidence for spinosaur diet comes from related European and South American taxa. Baryonyx was found with fish scales and bones from juvenile iguanodon in its stomach, while a tooth embedded in a South American pterosaur bone suggests that spinosaurs occasionally preyed on pterosaurs, but Spinosaurus was likely to have been a generalized and opportunistic predator, possibly a Cretaceous equivalent of large grizzly bears. Being biased towards fishing, though it undoubtedly scavenged and took many kinds of small or medium-sized prey. In 2009, Dal Sasso and colleagues reported the results of X-ray computed tomography of the snout. As the foramina on the outside all communicated with a space on the inside of the snout, the authors speculated that Spinosaurus had pressure receptors inside the space that allowed it to hold its snout at the surface of the water to detect swimming prey species without seeing them. A 2013 study suggests that Spinosaurus was not an obligate piscivore and that its diet was more closely associated with each individual's size. The characteristic rostral morphology of Spinosaurus allowed its jaws to resist bending in the vertical direction, but its jaws were poorly adapted with respect to resisting lateral bending compared to other members of this group, baryonyx and modern alligators. In 2022, Dr. Manabu Sakamoto estimated that Spinosaurus had an anterior bite force of 4,829 newtons and a posterior bite force of 1,936 newtons. Based on this estimate, he asserted that the jaws of Spinosaurus are adapted for generating relatively faster shutting speeds with less muscle input force, indicating that the animal likely killed its prey with fast snapping jaws rather than slow crushing bites a trait commonly observed in animals which have a semi-aquatic feeding habit. Locomotion and Posture 
Although traditionally depicted in the scientific community as a biped, Spinosaurus was often depicted in the mid-20th century as an obligate quadruped akin to Dimetrodon. Starting in the mid-1970s, it was hypothesized Spinosaurus was at least an occasional quadruped, bolstered by the discovery of Baryonyx, a relative with robust arms. Theropods, including Spinosaurids, could not pronate their hands, rotate the forearm so that the palm faced the ground, but a resting position on the side of the hand was possible, as shown by fossil prints from an early Jurassic theropod. The hypothesis that Spinosaurus had a typically quadrupedal gait since fell out of favor. However, it was still believed that Spinosaurids may have crouched in a quadrupedal posture due to biological and physiological constraints. The possibility of a quadrupedal Spinosaurus was revived by a 2014 paper by Ibrahim and colleagues that described new material of the animal. The paper found that the hind limbs of Spinosaurus were much shorter than previously believed, and that its center of mass was located in the midpoint of the trunk region, as opposed to near the hip, as in typical bipedal theropods. It was therefore proposed that Spinosaurus was poorly adapted for bipedal terrestrial locomotion, and must have been an obligate quadruped on land. The reconstruction used in the study was an extrapolation based on different sized individuals, scaled to what were assumed to be the correct proportions. Paleontologist John Hutchinson of the Royal Veterinary College of the University of London has expressed skepticism to the new reconstruction and cautioned that using different specimens can result in inaccurate chimeras. Scott Hardman also expressed criticism because he believed the legs and the pelvis were inaccurately scaled, 27% too short, and didn't match the published lengths. However, Mark Witten expressed agreement with the proportions reported in the paper. In their 2015 redescription of Sigil Massasaurus, Evers and colleagues argued that Sigil Massasaurus was in fact a distinct genus from Spinosaurus and therefore doubted whether the material assigned to Spinosaurus by Ibrahim should be assigned to Spinosaurus or Sigil Massasaurus. In 2018, an analysis found that Spinosaurus probably was competent at bipedal terrestrial locomotion. The center of mass was instead found to be close to the hips, allowing Spinosaurus to stand upright like other bipedal theropods. Skull Its skull had a narrow snout filled with straight conical teeth that lacked serrations. There were six or seven teeth on each side of the very front of the upper jaw, in the premaxillae, and another twelve in both maxillae behind them. The second and third teeth on each side were noticeably larger than the rest of the teeth in the premaxilla, creating a space between them and the large teeth in the front of the maxilla. Large teeth in the lower jaw faced this space. The very tip of the snout holding those few large front teeth was expanded and a small crest was present in front of the eyes. Postcranial Skeleton As a Spinosaurid, Spinosaurus would have had a long muscular neck curved in a sigmoid or S shape. Its shoulders were prominent and the four limbs large and stocky, bearing three clawed digits on each hand. The first finger or thumb would have been the largest. Spinosaurus had long phalanges, finger bones, and only somewhat recurved claws, suggesting that its hands were longer compared to those of other Spinosaurids. Very tall neural spines growing on the back vertebrae of Spinosaurus formed the basis of what is usually called the animal's sail. The lengths of the neural spines reached over ten times the diameters of the centra, vertebral bodies, from which they extended. The neural spines were slightly longer front to back at the base than higher up, unlike the thin rods seen in the Pelicosaur finbacks Edifosaurus and Dimetrodon, contrasting also with the thicker spines of the Iguanodontian Oranosaurus. Spinosaurus sails were unusual, although other dinosaurs, namely Oranosaurus, which lived a few million years earlier in the same general region as Spinosaurus, and the South American sauropod Armagosaurus might have developed similar structural adaptions of their vertebrae. The sail may be an analogue of the sail of the Permian synapsid Dimetrodon, which lived before the dinosaurs even appeared, produced by convergent evolution. 
The structure may also have been more hump-like than sail-like, as noted by Stromer in 1915 and Jack Bowman Bailey in 1997. One might rather think of the existence of a large bump of fat to which the neural spines gave internal support. In support of his buffalo back hypothesis, Bailey argued that in Spinosaurus, Oranosaurus, and other dinosaurs with long neural spines, the spines were relatively shorter and thicker than the spines of Pelicosaurus, which are known to have sails. Instead, the dinosaurs' neural spines were similar to the neural spines of extinct hump-backed mammals such as Megacerops and Bison latifrons. In 2014, Nizar Ibrahim and colleagues instead posited that the spines were covered tightly by skin, similar to a crested chameleon, given their compactness, sharp edges, and likely poor blood flow. Spinosaurus had a significantly smaller pelvis, hip bone, than that of other giant theropods, with the surface area of the ilium, main body of the pelvis, half that of most members of the clade. The hind limbs were short, at just over 25% of the total body length with the tibia, calf bone, being longer than the femur, thigh bone. Unlike in other theropods, the hallux, or fourth toe of Spinosaurus, touched the ground, and the phalanges of the toe bones were unusually long and well-built. At the ends were shallow claws that had flat bottoms. This type of foot morphology is also seen in shorebirds, indicating that Spinosaurus's feet evolved for walking across unstable substrate and that they may have been webbed. Weep reduction and interaction with other species Due to the scarcity of fossil remains, our knowledge of the reproduction and life cycle of the Spinosaurus is limited. Like other dinosaurs, it most likely reproduced sexually. Male and female Spinosaurus individuals would have engaged in courtship behaviors to attract mates and form breeding pairs. Modern animals with elaborate body structures often use them for display purposes to attract mates. The sail of the Spinosaurus may have served a similar purpose too. It was probably brightly colored and varied in size between males and females. Spinosaurus females probably laid eggs after mating. While no nests have been found so far, experts think they laid eggs on land. It isn't certain if the parents guarded their eggs nests till they hatched. The hatchlings would have been relatively small, but experts think they developed their semi-aquatic adaptions very young. A specimen of a juvenile Spinosaurus found in 1999 shows signs that the individual was either semi-aquatic at birth or developed that lifestyle at a very young age. As one of the largest predators around, Spinosaurus likely had few natural enemies in its ecosystem that may have posed a threat. The large size of this carnivore would have given it a formidable presence that discouraged any enemy from attacking. Scientists also think the Spinosaurus's sail may have served as a warning signal to intruders in its territory. Similar to the dorsal fin of sharks, the sight of its sail jutting out of the water would have been enough to warn off intruders. However, juvenile or injured Spinosaurus individuals could have been vulnerable to predation by larger theropods or other carnivorous dinosaurs, such as Carcharodontosaurus that lived on the tidal flats and mangrove forests of North Africa during the late Cretaceous. Although competition over prey and territory may have occurred between these large dinosaur species, but niche partitioning would have limited encounters between them.